Uh, around 200 workers are going to be affected by this fire at a Richards Bay wood chip factory. It's taken place at the NCT wood chip mill. It started on Saturday. It's still burning. Not exactly completely extinguished, but it seems that it may be under control. But let's head over there now uh, where we can see that smoke still visible uh, in the area as well. The Tiwi and Bluli, hello. We still have the smoke bellowing not far behind you. So is the fire under control or is it not under control? Depends very much on the wind, doesn't it? When you look at that vehicle, oh, by the way, before you... CT wood chip company. I want to step out of shots and show you the damage that has been caused by the fire. What you're seeing on your screen right now are visuals of where the fire started on Saturday. And of course, this is the amount of damage um, that has been caused by this fire. We do understand that the machinery um, in this part of the company has all been damaged. And when I spoke to the general manager of the company a bit earlier on, he did share that um, it's ran into the millions um, what they are losing on a daily basis. Right now there are aerial um, operations that are currently taking place where we're seeing um, airplanes basically flying around and dropping some chemical that is meant to contain the fire. As you're seeing um, during this walkabout we're basically inside where this fire is taking place and they're trying to contain it. Right now what you're seeing are also firefighters trying to contain the fire from spreading to other industries as there are um, companies that are situated next to NCT. Basically what they're saying right now is that they're trying to make sure that when the wind picks up, um, they will be avoiding the fire spreading into those companies because the other companies that are situated next to um, NCT, unfortunately, um, have da da dangerous chemicals. I want to go to um, also Denny. Um, who is the general manager of um, NCT. I want to bring him in so that he can explain to us exactly what is currently taking place in terms of the area operations. Um, he's right now standing with the chief of um, the firefighting here in Umshatuzi. They've been discussing and being in meetings all day. Um, Danny, if you can please just join us this side. I want to talk to you about the operations that we're seeing this morning. We spoke a little bit, a little bit about what's happening. We're seeing area operations as well. Take us through it. Okay. So as you can see from what we spoke about earlier, we're working both here on the ground and um, we've got Ms. Latou's uh, fire department working from this side of the fire and the aerial battle continues. We're dropping water and retardant on the piles that you see behind me to protect them and you can see men uh, watching from up top and we're putting foam on there and behind those piles as well. We're also working on that to try and keep the protection in. Um, you can see that the wind is really, really not in our favor right now and the risk is very, very high and we're going to keep fighting as long as we can. This is um, ground zero and this is uh, everything. We're throwing everything we can at it at the moment. Yeah. Talk, about, talk, talk to us rather about the equipment that you've lost. I'm seeing the machinery and also the infrastructure that was damaged on Saturday. Yeah, so from this plant perspective, um, we've lost all our, our log stock and, and you can see the chip pile is going to be unsalvageable and a lot of the infrastructure here is quite badly damaged from the fire. Um, so the, the, the loss from an equipment point of view is going to be uh, hundreds of millions of rands. Um, the plant adjacent, our other plant that you see burning uh, right in the background, that one is going to be even worse. Yeah. Um, we, we will be able to salvage some of the infrastructure here once we get going to be able to turn us around. Uh, from that point of view, we've been quite lucky. But we still think it's going to take a couple of weeks to get this fire out. Yeah. And we'll have to really, really assess once we've got everything safe. So right now, we're not thinking about what's left. We're focusing on the fire. In terms of contaminating the fire, are we sure that um, it's under control and it won't be moving to the CBD or to the houses that are situated next to the company? So we've looked forward for the winds for the, for the next week, and the most prominent wind is the one that you're seeing now. So while that places our neighbours, uh, uh, TWK and Fosco, at some risk, there's no risk to any of the suburban areas as we see it for the next, at least for the next week. And we'll evaluate on, on a very, on a, the winds on a daily basis. Yeah. Yeah. You were in a meeting with Fosco not so long ago. I know that they have some dangerous chemicals in that company, so you don't want um, the fire reaching that part of the company. Yeah, I, I think um, the most important chemical that we need to make sure there's no, that it's protected and they're doing everything they can for that themselves is the sulfur stocks that they've got, which are quite low, they say, for this time of year. Yeah. And in terms of how the company will be impacted, we did speak a bit about this a bit earlier on, on the loss that you're going to be recording. Um, talk to us about the, the other companies that will be affected by this. Um, 
Well, from a from a, a point of view of the fact that we cannot operate here for the next six to eight months, um, it, that affects our members and the foresters who are supplying us timber because they don't have anywhere for them for their timber to go. So that's going to be devastating for them in terms of cash flow. And we talk about the smallest and the poorest of the of the uh, community growers, right up to uh, um, the commercial plantation owners as well. Um, so that is a, a real challenge for us, and we need to find alternative markets as quickly as we can for that. There will be a loss of revenue uh, uh, for the port, uh, for Transnet and so because we don't have any product to send them probably for the next six to eight months. And um, you know, uh, from from that, other than that, uh, the cost of fighting this fire is going to be astronomical. It's going to run into tens of billions of uh, tens of millions of rands, and um, everyone is going to feel the brunt of that from from within the community. Um, and we just hope that we can contain the fire and not let the damage uh, to uh, neighbouring areas uh, spread anymore and cost more money. Um, and lastly, Danny, um, I just want to speak about the health of the community. Of course, this, this is a lot of smoke that we're seeing. Our community is safe in terms of the smoke and also what is currently taking place around their areas? Okay, so right now it is obviously pure wood smoke. Um, um, while it's certainly not great to inhale, uh, it doesn't have any chemicals with it and that it's just it's certainly going to irritate you it's going to irritate your nose and eyes um, but it is just wood there's no chemicals in any way so we're grateful for that at the moment and um, w the community can expect this plume of smoke that we see here for for at least a couple of weeks because we're not going to put this fire up quite quickly Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Well, there you have it, Gareth. Um, what we're seeing here at the NCT Woodship, um, or Woodship rather, company, um, Danny just took us through some of the losses that they're experiencing as a company. Of course, they are saying that the damage or the fire that you're seeing is going to take a few weeks um, to extinguish. And then we also have the mayor here of Mshatuzi, but I did speak to the deputy mayor a bit earlier on um, about their efforts. They are saying that they have every, every emergency personnel on the ground trying to extinguish the fire. Um, of course the communities here around the NCT company we're hearing are safe um, and it's just smoke with no chemicals and they are also warning the, the, the residents rather and the motorists to not use the John Rose Highway at the moment because of the aerial um, things that are currently happening. So we will be keeping an eye. Of course um, the walkabout is about to conclude and we will be heading back um, but we will we will be bringing you more information because I'm also hearing that there's going to be more meetings that are being um, held here. But of course, this is the extent of the damage um, currently at the NCT company here in Richards Bay. Yeah, there's a massive mounds of wood chips and you can see how long it's uh, taking for it to try and burn its way through. But it goes even around that corner as well. You can see the conveyor belt system has been completely destroyed. Uh, never mind the infrastructure that we can't even see at the moment. As we pan to our left, there's one of the wood chip mill piles. Uh, what you're seeing there is uh, this fire retardant. They're obviously trying to prevent the spark from jumping across to that wood chip mill and setting that alight as well. That's why you're seeing that, uh, I would say, very, very brave team standing on the side of that little wood chip mill uh, trying to stop it uh, from jumping across as well. So that's what you're seeing. We have the firefighting crews on the right and the prevention crews uh, on the left. It does look uh, very, very dramatic on camera, but it does sound like uh, the situation is under control. But you can see that wind is starting to whip up again in the direction of that wood chip mill uh, that has not caught light. Hopefully it doesn't. And there's the firefighters doing what they can on the side. Latiwe, thank you. We'll come back to you again a little bit later. But all those residents in the Richards Bay area, uh, no health concerns, of course, but the smoke might be causing trouble uh, along some major arterial roads.